What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far today. Getting into this episode of GH, um, I enjoyed this episode. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, first of all, Nicholas is much better than I would be because there's no way in hell Esme would be staying at my house. I'm just saying. I don't give a damn if I have a castle that got 109 bedrooms to it. You're not staying with me. I don't know you. You know what I mean? Like, no. You're not staying in my house. You got parents, don't you, that got a little coin or something? Tell them to wire you some money. You can go stay at a fancy hotel somewhere, but you're not staying in my home. That's what I would have did. Nicholas is, you doing too much. And I mean, I get it. You know, he's trying to be nice to Esme or whatever, just to get in good with Spencer or whatever and, and fix that little relationship. But I still wouldn't agree to it. And he was bending over backwards to try to meet her needs. Talking about some, oh, you know, if you don't like the bedroom or whatever, you can pick another room. Or we can get a decorator in here. We could decorate it. I said, Nicholas, sir, you're doing too much. I'm not redecorating no room. I'm not spending no money for that. I mean, remember when Ava moved in after they got married? He raised hell on Ava because she wanted to get $10,000 sheets. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm just saying, like, I, that I could agree with. Ava was tripping because <laughs> ain't nobody about to spend no 10 G's on those sheets. I get that. But I also ain't about to redecorate no room for some chick who I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? Like, he don't know nothing about this girl. Nothing. He don't know this girl from a can of paint. And you talking about remodeling a room for her? You're tripping. Then she's sitting there. He talking about, oh, I'm going to talk to the chefs and get some blackberries in here. Because she said that's her favorite fruit or whatever is blackberries. And um, he's going to tell the chef and all the people how she like her coffee. And I say, you are bugging, Nicholas. Stop doing that. Stop it. And I love that little conversation Kevin had with Esme. Kevin read her like a book. He figured out her he figured her whole personality out from one casual conversation with her. That's a damn good psychiatrist right there. That goes to show you Kevin is dope at his job. Like he's always in psychiatry mode. Like he's always in doctor mode whenever he's having a conversation with somebody. And he had a brief conversation with her. Very brief. But I felt like it was a tit for tat game between him and her, like cat and mouse in a way. I feel like that every time Kevin talks to somebody, it's like cat and mouse because he's always psychoanalyzing somebody. It just comes natural to him being a doctor. He's so used to it. And I felt like she was trying to psychoanalyze him in a way because she was talking about, oh, you know, psychiatry is fascinating. And she was thinking about getting into that field. I said, I bet your crazy ass was. Um, and she was like, oh, did, you know, being a psychiatrist shape your you know upbringing or did it help you with demons in your past or something like that like she was just giving it she was giving it to kevin as good as she was getting i said oh and even kevin was looking at her like you know like a little off putting like okay i see you but when he was talking to nicholas he basically told nicholas gave nicholas her whole psycho you know, psyche profile, whatever they call it. You know how you profile somebody? He basically broke down a profile to Nicholas about this girl off of that brief conversation. You know, he was like, basically, she's the type of girl. Um, she gets what she wants. She's high maintenance. Um, basically, she's going to be, he was warning Nicholas that she's going to be a lot to handle. Like, she's going to be very, you know, a bit much to, you know, to handle, like, in a way. And, you know, they were figuring that Spencer doesn't seem to mind her high maintenance or whatever, but he's young. He don't know no better. Um, every time Spencer eavesdrops on Nicholas's conversations and stuff and he hears Nicholas talk about Ava, he starts to look, you know, regretful, like he's very regretful about what he's doing, as he should be, as he should be, because your father is giving up you know, letting a woman that he loves leave because he loves you more. You know what I'm saying? Because you're his son. You know, he doesn't want to choose between his wife and his son, but, you know, Ava's kind of forcing his hand to do so. But it sucks, though, and I feel like Spencer is just being a brat. Like, yeah, what your father did was messed up, what Ava did was messed up, but it's like, let it go. You know what I'm saying? Let it go. How long are you going to stew about this? 
It's ridiculous at this point. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, Trina is on a mission because after her conversation with Ava today, she was so pissed that Ava has to give up everything in Port Charles because of this stalker. And I and I understand why she didn't tell Ava, you know, her suspicions about Spencer and Esme because she doesn't have proof yet. Um, so of course she needed Jocelyn's help, but Jocelyn is, you know, dealing with family stuff now that Sonny's back and stuff. So she enlisted Cameron's help. And of course, Cameron was skeptical at first about Esme and Spencer being the culprits, but it started making sense. After Trina broke down everything and they started, you know, going back and forth talking about the situation, it started to make sense. Um, Spencer is a spoiled brat. You know, he really is. And Esme is the devil. And I love that Trina is, you know, going to take her down. But of course, they know that they have to, in order to take them down, they need one of them to flip. They need one of them to snitch. I think the best person for them to go after would be Spencer. He's the weaker of the two. Esme, you can sit there and talk to that girl till the cows come home. She's not going to give you nothing. She might slip up here and there like she did before when she called Kiki Lauren and then kept started calling her Kiki. That was a slip up on her part. But she's very smart and strong willed. So going after her is going to yield no results. What they need to do is they need to isolate, separate. You know what I mean? They need to divide and conquer. If they get Spencer by himself, and keep Esme busy so that way she can't interrupt the conversation, they can get Spencer to snitch. I think that's the best way to go in order to nip this in the bud now. It's the best possible answer to this. I really don't think Esme is going to crack. Spencer looks like he's ready to crack. He looks regretful every time. So I think that's they should start there. I'm loving this little teamwork right now between them. I think they definitely need to get on this. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, Valentine and, and, you know, Valentine and Anna are trying to figure this Peter nonsense out. They're trying to get answers about where he could be. Um, and they think talking to Nina might help or whatever, but she already went back to Port Charles. Um, so once Jax informed them about Sonny being Mike and all that stuff and, you know, Valentine was pretty much like, you know, she had her reasons for doing it or whatever because he wasn't trying to judge Nina. Because he felt like he was in no position to judge her, especially with all the crap he done pulled. And he does have a point. I mean, sometimes when you tell lies and stuff, they kind of take a life of its own. They do because it's so true. When you tell one lie, you have to tell 20 more lies to cover the first lie that you told. So that's how it spirals out of control. Before you know it, you're telling about 50, 60 different lies before it comes crashing down on you. It happens. It definitely does. Not to excuse her behavior, of course, but it happens. Um... And of course, you know, Anna called Robin or whatever to let her know about Sonny being alive. And she was wondering if Valentine wanted to head back to Port Charles to be with Nina. When she said that, I saw the look on Valentine's face like he was looking at her like, listen, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't about to be with nobody but you. <laughs> That's how he was looking at her. I said, I ain't mad at you, Valentine. Stay with your boo. I'm not mad at you. I really don't think Valentine is thinking about Nina in that aspect anymore romantically i don't think i think he's over nina i could be wrong but i you know i think he's always gonna have love for her but i think romantically he he you know has a shot at getting with the woman that he's always wanted all these years you know he's always been pining away for anna he might just get her they're both single they're both working together right now on something so it could bring them closer you know what i mean so hey sparks are flying but in the meantime they got to get down to this business um, so she got a call from the borough. Chloe made it to the consulate. She made it to the um to the people or whatever for help. But she got into a crash. So Chloe got into a crash. She was in and out of consciousness. They know her name. So once they told Anna her name, Anna put, you know, her and Valentine remembered that Chloe Jennings is the nurse that Peter hired for Maxie, but he switched her out with that imposter. They thought she was dead. I mean, hell, we all thought she was dead at this point, but nope, she alive. So Anna and Valentine need to hop on a plane or something, go out there, go talk to her and go find out where Drew is. Because after she talked to Peter when she was about to shoot him, she knew at that moment Drew was really alive because he was bargaining. The fact that Peter was trying to make a deal with her for Drew's whereabouts, it, con it confirmed to her that, OK, so Sam was on to something. So Drew really is alive. I say, yep, bingo. You got it. Look like they getting closer and closer. Drew might be uh getting rescued. 
real soon. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, that whole Jason and Britt scene was emotional a little bit to watch. Not for me, but I enjoyed it. Um, it had some emotional undertones, I think, for both of them because the feelings is definitely still there. I believe Jason still got feelings for Britt. Part of me feel like when he told her about Sonny being alive and him and Carly not being married and stuff like that. I felt like with the questions that Britt was asking, a part of me felt like she was fishing a little bit. Fishing for information to try to see where she now stands with him. Like if there's any chance between the two of them now. You know what I mean? Um, But I definitely am glad that, you know, they had that conversation. I do want Britt to be happy. I do like her with Jason. But my thing is at this moment, after everything that's transpired the last couple months... I feel like maybe she belongs with somebody else, maybe, because I really don't want to see her get wrapped up in that whole Carly, Jason, Sonny saga. I don't want to see her get wrapped up in that because I really feel like Jason is not really going to make any woman that he's with number one like that. He's always going to be loyal to Carly, Sonny and the business. That's always going to come before anything else. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't want to see Britt get wrapped up into that. I'd rather see her be with somebody who she can be in a 50-50 relationship with. And when I say 50-50, I mean somebody who's going to confide in her. Somebody who's going to tell her things that she needs to know. You know what I'm saying? Not keep certain things secret. You know what I mean? Jason, you're only going to get but so much information out of him. Um, But, you know, she did tell him about Peter and stuff being alive and what happened to her mother. And he did offer to help. He was like, you know, I could get Britt or Spinelli to look into it. And she was like, no, no, I don't need you to rescue my mother. I'll handle it myself. I kind of wish she took him up on that, even though you got other people looking into it. But Spinelli and Britt are A1. So having them on the team would definitely, you know, speed this thing up. But I get why she didn't want Jason involved in this. I get it. But, I mean, she still could have used, you know, Spinelli and Brick to at least look into it. You didn't necessarily need Jason to come rescue. You could have got somebody else to do that. You know, it doesn't, you know, it's not bad to have some good high-tech people on the team now. I'm just saying. Um, especially ones that you don't have to come out of pocket and pay because I'm sure Jason can handle those expenses. Um. So, anyway, I'm super happy that Jason went back. He went to, you know, Sonny and Carly house to go talk to Carly. I'm glad he did because I feel like Carly and Jason need to have that conversation. They need to have an honest conversation because you can tell both of them are conflicted. Both of them have feelings for each other. The thing about Jason is you never really know with him. So a part of me feels like maybe he told Carly that he was in love with her just to satisfy her. Because remember, she did have doubts about marrying him because she didn't want to resent him. That what if she started falling for him, but he didn't feel the same and that would mess up their friendship. So maybe he just told her what she needed to hear or what she wanted to hear. You know what I mean? You never really know with Jason. But Carly is definitely conflicted. You can tell, like, obviously she loves Jason. She loves Sonny. You know what I mean? Um, and I do remember, it's so funny because she had that scene this morning where she was in the kitchen and Sonny was making coffee. And the way she was holding the coffee mug and looking at the coffee and stuff and she had that little smile on her face... I remember months ago, she did say that Sonny would make coffee every morning and the coffee would be perfect. It would be a one. I mean, he is a coffee importer, so the coffee better be good. Um, and she said ever since he was gone, the coffee just was not hitting. It was not right. So it's kind of funny to see her hold the coffee mug and she tastes the coffee and stuff. And she was like, yeah, it's back to right. <laughs> So that was a funny scene. But you know what? I really do hope her and Jason have an honest conversation about where they're standing, you know, where the future, you know, what the future may hold for him, for both of them now that Sonny's back. Um, I just want Jason to be honest. We already know Carly Gunn be honest. Jason needs to be honest because Jason's that type of person. He goes along just to get along. Like he sit there and tell people, well, whatever you want, I'll do and I don't want him to say that because he does that all the time with people. And that shit is annoying. Stop telling people I'll do it's whatever you want. No, tell them what you want this time. Tell her what what you need, what you want. That's what he needs to start doing with people, not just Carly, but everybody around him. Like start opening up a little bit more. And I know that's not Jason's thing, but he needs to, 
make that a thing. Like, start telling people what you want. It's not always about what everybody else wants. You got to start looking out for you and what you need and what you want from a, a, a emotional level and a friendship level, a relationship level. You need to start voicing that instead of just going along to get along because that can be annoying. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, I did love the scenes between Sonny, Ava, and Carly. This is this is the fire that I wanted to see in Sonny. Because I was like, he's not really getting mad about things since he's been back. And maybe he's just grateful to be back. I get it. But this was the first time since he's been back that I see him get mad about something. You know, when Ava was telling him about the stalker and how, you know, they put a teddy bear in Avery's room and it had Ryan's voice and he just banged on the table and went off. That's the fire I wanted to see since he's been back, and I'm glad I'm finally getting it. I said, it's about time you mad about something. Um, But he respected the fact that Ava left. Well, Ava's leaving the country. He said the same thing pretty much that Carly and everybody else said, that she shouldn't leave. And that says a lot coming from Sonny to Ava. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody know they don't really like each other like that. They tolerate each other for the sake of Avery. But for him to tell her to stay, that she shouldn't be leaving, that screams volumes it speaks volumes coming from him um and that's why i've been saying ava needs to fight this you know i understand she wants to protect her daughter but sonny's back now you know what i'm saying he ain't about to let no freak into his house to terrorize their child and he got guards on the rest of his kids and stuff so you know you good you in the you in the good hands of all state so you need to go ahead and you know stay and fight this um so, you know, she decided that it would be best for all three of them to go upstairs, talk to Avery collectively and explain to her what's going on. Um, I love those scenes, you know, because they were compassionate towards her. And mind you, Sonny and Carly can be a total ass towards her if they wanted to. And in my opinion, they would be well within their rights. I mean, Ava has put them through the ringer in the last eight years of her being in town, you know. And for Sonny and Carly to be this nice to her or sympathetic, you know, it's just, I'm happy for it. You know, even though they're not going to be besties and none, and Carly made that very clear. She was like, you know, me and Ava ain't never going to be best friends, but I can sympathize. I said, well, thank God. Um, I do agree with Carly. I feel like Sonny does make promises, though, that he can't keep, that he believes that he can keep, but he can't. Um, when he told her that nothing was going to, you know, take him away from, you know, the family and stuff like that. Carly appreciated him saying that, but she was realistic. She was like, I know you want to believe that, but you know that you can't keep that promise. And I agree, especially with the business that that, that he's in, you can't keep that promise. Um, but it was good seeing Sonny back in his suit and his element. It's obvious that he's still trying to adjust being back home. I mean, the man slept in the guest room, you know, so he's trying to adjust to being back home. And I'm glad that he is. Um so anyway, moving on from that, Maxie and Nina had a conversation. You know, Nina pretty much told Maxie everything that happened. <sighs> Nina was continuing to talk like a dean bat. Like, she bulged her eyes out after Maxie said that Mike wasn't real. He's real to me. I'm like, Nina, calm down. Calm down. He's not real. Calm down. I'm so tired of people saying, oh, he real. He might have some characteristics that may be true, but Sonny is Sonny. Even Nina said it. She was like, she loves Mike. She even admitted it out loud that she loves Mike. She does not love Sonny. So that pretty much confirms, yeah, Mike is not real. You're dealing with Sonny. This is him. This is who he is. Because she was like, I don't love Sonny. I don't even know Sonny like that. But Maxie gave her good advice. Pretty much kind of similar to Phyllis's advice. Phyllis basically told her, you know, you just need to own up to your mistakes. You need to take accountability, own it, and move forward. Maxie pretty much told her kind of the same thing, but she was more like, you know what? Give them space. I agree with that. She needs to give them space. Like, give Sonny space, give his family space. Would she listen to that? No. Absolutely not. Um, Because Sonny went to the cemetery and he saw his gravestone. And, of course, Nina popped up at the cemetery. I'm like, Nina, you don't listen. You don't listen. Part of you listen because... I believe that she's there to try to make amends or whatever, but I don't really think anything that she says is really going to make amends. Um, but she should have listened to Maxie and just kept her distance for a second. You know what I'm saying? Like, just let a little time pass. Give it a couple months, maybe. Slowly integrate yourself into their world and try to talk to them and make amends. Don't just pop up and don't, don't do that. 
that was a little bit much. I was like, get that man some space and some time to, you know, figure things out. I'm glad that um, Maxie had called Britt over and stuff to give her her take on what could have happened to Lisa and stuff. I would love to see Britt go on an adventure to go rescue her mother. You know what I'm saying? I think that could be fun, too. Her, Scott teaming up, maybe Anna and Valentine. You know what I'm saying? All of them teaming up. That would be so fun. That would be like some Mission Impossible type stuff. Like, I would love to see that. That, I think, would be dope. I think that would be really fun. Um, so anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you guys thought, and I will see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.